Hello and welcome to Runkle of the Bailey. My name is Ian Runkle, I'm a Canadian criminal defense and firearms lawyer. I've recently seen some articles talking about this thing. This is the Power Fist cordless screwdriver gun. And if you're wondering, Power Fist is Princess Auto's home brand. And if you're wondering what's Princess Auto, they're kind of like a knockoff Harbor Freight. Um, Harbor Freight doesn't ship to Canada and Princess Auto is kind of our best equivalent. So they're selling this product and some news articles are not happy about this. I'm not linking those articles here because I'm not quoting them. And frankly, they're not very good. Uh, they're talking about this thing going, oh my God, isn't this, you know, is this legal? This could be a replica firearm. And replica firearms are banned in Canada. And they're also making some comments of, oh, somebody could get killed or somebody could get robbed with one of these. Well, all right. So first, let's talk about the issue of replica firearm, because a replica firearm is banned in Canada. And a replica firearm is defined as something that first isn't a gun. Now, that's not going to be a concern here because this thing is definitely not a gun. It doesn't shoot any projectiles or anything like that, but something so not a gun, but it matches with near precision an existing model of firearm. And it's got to match with near precision because they didn't want to ban a bunch of things that look gun-ish. So this is an airsoft gun, so it's not going to be a replica. And I've got other videos talking about that delineation. But you can see here that there's a bunch of features that they would look at if they were trying to decide if this was a replica. And so, you know, amongst other things, notwithstanding that it's an airsoft gun, you can probably see on the side here that it's marked as caliber 45. Um, it's also got, and this is, you know, I should note no magazine in this. It is clear. There is no CO2 cartridge. This thing is, you know, safe as we can get here. Uh, but it's got something, you know, indicating danger exhaust ports, read manual. Um, you're not going to hurt yourself with a, uh, with an airsoft gun, at least not in this capacity. So, uh, they would look at all of these features, but just this, just saying that this looks really gun-ish, you know, if somebody were to point this at you in the dark that you'd think it was a gun is not enough. In order for it to be a prohibited replica, they also have to point to this and say, this matches a specific actual gun that exists in the real world. So if this matches a, a new design, if this is something that doesn't uh, match any firearm that exists, but just would be a, you know, it looks like it could be a gun, but it would be a new model of gun, then this would not be a replica and would not be prohibited, assuming it wasn't an airsoft gun. This is just kind of our hypothetical. So with that in mind, let's have a look at this particular item. Because again, you know, the Power Fist uh, cordless screwdriver gun, you can see it on the, the box there. So let's uh, dig this out. Now, um, when I saw these articles, I went and said, hey, I maybe I should go pick one of these up. And I saw that they were on clearance. And one of the things that I was worried about is I was thinking, okay, uh, maybe Princess Auto has seen some of this coverage. They're getting a little nervous. And they're just looking to blow these things out and get rid of them because they don't really want the attention. Uh, so I was a little concerned, you know, when I'm going and ordering these things, because, of course, I don't want to end up with a prohibited replica. But I didn't figure that they would be a prohibited replica. The news article talks about them being, uh, you know, that they did some steps to try to comply. So the first thing you will note, of course, is the color. It is bright blue. Now... Past case law has said that simply the color might not be enough to save something from being a replica if it is otherwise, you know, if it would otherwise meet the criteria, you know, and the reason for that is because spray paint exists, right? So when you hear the government talking about airsoft guns and so forth and saying, oh, well, they'll just have to be bright colors, that's actually not how the law has been going. The law has been saying that uh, that, that would not be sufficient. But that's when you're talking about an airsoft gun that matches an existing uh, design of firearm. Now, the other thing is you can see that it's got these bits sitting there. So they've actually used these kind of revolver designs as a place for bit storage. Okay, um, that's not something that usually you'd see on a, uh, a firearm. It does have something that I guess kind of matches the design of a safety. You can see me sort of playing with it here. And this just determines whether it rotates left or right. So, um, and it does have kind of a weird, um, you know, pattern there. That said, I think it would be very hard to mistake this kind of crude shaping for a real gun. 
But it doesn't really end there because it this thing does not look really like any existing model of firearm. And I'll show you why. Let's turn it this way. Now, I just want you to picture in your head, you know, now that I've got this drill or this screwdriver pointed sort of here, picture in your head what these revolving cylinders would have to look like. Because they put a semicircle and they attached a semicircle, so the inside would have to be either two cylinders or else one cylinder of a weird shape there is no revolver that looks like this because this would have a real problem with physics um yeah this is not a viable shape for a revolver without some really clever engineering so yeah this obviously doesn't match any existing model of firearm it's also really chunky you know this thing is really thick and heavy and you'll note here that the, you know, the supposed barrel, um, it's it's where you put the bits. You know, it's where these things fit in. So it's got a, a hex uh, shape to it, which of course would be very unusual for a uh, for a revolver. Also, when you uh, pull the trigger on this thing, uh, it uh, got a little light on it, and you can hear it whir. Uh, that light feature isn't something that you would normally see, and also. Normally, this would be the barrel and not this. There's, you know, not many uh, not many designs that fire from the bottom. There are some, but not many. Uh, they, it also has little lights on the top. And, you know, they, uh, they sort of, you can push a button here. I think that's to check the battery just to see how much juice it's got in it. Um, this is not a normal feature of a revolver that they would have a light up thing. All in all, I would say, uh, oh, and it comes with a sticker that indicates on the front that it's a uh, cordless screwdriver gun. So this clearly is not going to match any existing model of a firearm. So any news article, and there were some of them, that called this a replica firearm is just wrong. There is no way to get to that conclusion here. This is plainly not a replica firearm. So... Um, minus one point for the articles that, uh, that described it as one, because that's, that's massively wrong. Um, none of the other sort of gun elements move. Like, you know, if I show you this airsoft gun, uh, there's a grip safety on it, and that is a part that moves. Uh, you can draw the hammer back, you can rack the slide, all of those things, right? Um, on this, there's only two pieces that move. There's the trigger well sorry three pieces there's the trigger there's our direction select and there's actually the uh you know the screwdriver uh bit there so that is sort of all we've got uh, that moves on this there's no functional elements so clearly not a replica firearm now the question is well what about uh is this an imitation firearm an imitation firearm is used in the law in several places where they'll say you know, it's illegal to commit this crime with a real firearm or with an imitation firearm. Now, imitation firearm can be just about anything. Under the right circumstances, a pen could potentially be an in imitation circumstance or imitation firearm. Uh, and, you know, when they say, oh, somebody could get robbed with this. Well, sure. If somebody, poke, you know, came up behind you and poked this into your back, uh, you might not be able to turn around and see how ridiculous this thing looks. But again, they could really do the same thing with a pen or a Sharpie or, you know, whatever else. Um, this is, sorry, this is an Inkzol. So uh, not a, a Sharpie brand, but same kind of idea. So, the pro you know, anybody, you could rob somebody in that fashion with, you know, the handle of a hairbrush or, you know, a stick of butter. Yeah, let's let's get worried about a stick of butter next um, because of that possibility. If you get robbed by somebody holding this, you know, face on, then I, you know, I almost kind of feel like that's on you. This thing is so obviously not a gun that at that point you can almost just call it an act of charity when you hand over your wallet. Now, that's not the law. The law would probably say, OK, well, this would be, you know, the law sort of allows for a lot of... Um, a lot of stupidity on the part of the person being held up. But again, this thing really does not look very gun-like at all. 
So yeah, I'm just kind of disappointed. I feel like those articles are um, either they're being written by people who are too ignorant to know what they're talking about. And that I think is a problem because I mean, if we're talking about the news, uh, you know, talking about these news sources that are trying to sort of present uh, things to people as if it's actual, genuine, useful information, well, then they should know what they're talking about when they're going to, you know, say this story about something being super scary or whatever. Um, or, you know, it might not be that they're ignorant. It might be that they actually know that this is not a not an issue and they're just not being honest. That's the other possibility. So um, now you might be thinking, I want to go buy one of these. Those look cool. And I'm going to also say um, there's some people who are probably thinking, oh, or, you know, other people thinking, oh, uh, you know, is Runkle getting a sponsorship or something? I went and bought this myself. It was 12 bucks or something plus tax on clearance. And it's not very good. Um, this is not going to replace my screwdriver sort of setup. Uh, I will probably either give this away to somebody or throw it in the trash. It is, it was for making a video and that's it. Um, I don't recommend this product. I think it's kind of a piece of novelty crap, but that doesn't mean we should be all afraid of it. I mean, this is just, it's just not very good. That's what it comes down to. I, yeah. And no, I did not receive any sort of sponsorship dollars or anything like that. They probably aren't going to be too happy with me talking about, hey, your product kind of sucks. But it, it does, though. <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope that this has been, you know, interesting or educational. I hope that this uh, is, you know, maybe provided you guys with a little bit more information because on this one, the media has not been doing a great job. Anyway, I want to, you know, if you like this video, please like it, share it with your friends, subscribe to see more content. I also want to thank my Patreon supporters at the $50 level, Canada's National Firearms Association, the CCFR, and the Canadian Shooting Sports Association. At the $30 level, Sights and Arms Limited and Mark Olivier Demour. And at the $20 level, McTain, Mark, Jane Baben Luxor, Haywire, Dale Nesbitt, Cameron Johnson, Bruno R., April Crawford, Andrew Elsich, and Vicky. Thank you as well to all of you at the $10 level who will be in the crawl immediately following. Uh, next time, I hope to be doing a video. I have done some recording at the range. I'm going to have to do some additional recording, but I want to talk a little bit more about Alec Baldwin and the rust shooting because I went and picked up the uh, reproduction. It's the same make and model. Uh, it's the same kind of reproduction that Alec Baldwin used on that film set. I also picked up some actual film dummies. They came from a film armorer. So I want to talk about exactly what had to happen, what level of carelessness was required in order for uh, Helena Hutchins to die there. And so have a look. Um, I kind of want to share that with you because all of what I'm hearing on that kind of makes me upset and annoyed. Anyway, I really hope you'll join me for that. See you next time.